Hey, g'day. Welcome again to uh, Rod's Backyard. Aquaponics dramas, let's call it this morning. Aquaponics dramas. So I just wanted to chat about electricity and some of the problems you can have. We've just had a blackout here in Cairns. Happens quite frequently. I do have solar backup on the roof, so I've got 15 kilowatts for the house and uh, fridges and everything else. But out here in the backyard, it all runs off the power. It does, and I've even got a battery backup and storage. But when you've got a family, it doesn't last long. And I've, I need a couple more batteries on my backup because about eight o'clock at night, then my battery backup's out. Now, normally uh, the battery backup, you know, would kick in and provide electricity for the pond and the perch. That you see behind me but sometimes you just have to have all other backup plans as well so let me just show you what i'm doing now in the midst of our energy crisis here in cairns um you can see all my outlets are just not working nothing is working at all so i've just got a um lawnmower battery i don't know if you can see it there just a just a a normal lawnmower battery out of a ride-on mower and uh, if, you, if you're buying it new, it's around about $80 um, at any auto place. But just as a backup, and I've got a, I've got a very small um, aerator, very small aerator. And that aerator is, how's it connected? It's just simply connected, simply connected by a um, little gadget, like so. Now this also double, it's a car, it's a cigarette lighter point. So if you're transporting fish around in your car, it's also very good for that as well. So uh, that's what I use as a, as a last resort. Uh, physically have to go and connect all these things. But look, it's just connected um, via that connection point, via two-way aerator. And simply I've just got a, well, I've got two air stones going straight into the pond. So that's my last resort. Now this little aerator, system doesn't really provide adequate oxygen but it um i've got some big fish there i've got about 150 um, jade perch at the moment in the pond behind me and look they're doing well it was, it's a blackout overnight so in this particular case they're doing okay um they're not gulping for air or anything like that but you just got to watch your fish and look one air stone will keep them going it's not going to run the aquaponics but one air stone backup is you know it's going to keep my life and that's what you want. Now this little power blackout here is also an opportune time for me to look at a couple of things on my system. And I've been improving this all the time, every time. Every time there's an issue, I, I spend a few hours and just, just connect things up as you go. Since it's in your backyard, if you're gonna do this as a commercial system, you would have everything right up front. You'd design it even, you know, schmick. It would be designed very schmick. Uh, but in a backyard system, you can connect as you go if you need to. And remember, I've been doing this over 20 years now, and I've been upgrading, upgrading, upgrading as you go, because you can do that. It's modular. You can add on, add on, add on. And that's the beautiful thing about aquaponics. Um, with a family and with other monetary commitments, you can just do that. Now, what I've got here, I'll just show you. Um, so I've got a pump. Underneath there, that's a 16,000 litre pump. I've got a barrel union here so I can disconnect the pump. But what I'm going to do now is put a, a one-way flow valve. So what's going to happen is, it's, it's a, it'll stop any, any, anything from the filter behind me backwashing into my pond and then starving the fish of oxygen when they need it the most, when there's no oxygen in the water from uh, blackout. So this is from another system that I had and look, I encourage everyone to get one of these uh, one-way valves because if you don't, the contents of your whatever filter you've got, whether it's a spiral filter, a radial filter, or everything's going to backwash straight into your pond. And what it does is all of that ammonia um, will just end up back in here. All that fish poo just takes up all the oxygen and yeah, your fish won't appreciate it. So it's an opportune time when the power's out anyway. And really, you're under pressure too, so you get it done quicker. No procrastination when you've got fish's lives at stake. 
So I'm going to insert this here. Now you can see I've got a lot of joins. I keep it joining and putting taps and all sorts of things over the years. So it just means that I'll push the, the pump out further into the pond. But look, at the end of the day, I, I need this one-way valve. The, the other place I could put it is here in that little pipe going straight down. So I could put the one-way valve right there. But if I do that, I have to take the timber off. It's a lot harder for me. So I might just push it straight out into the pond a little bit further. And let's just have a look as well. Have a look into the filter. Yeah, I did clean this out only two weeks ago, but you can see in there that um, it is a bit of a mess. So I'm going to clean the filter out. Also going to put a barrel union, a little barrel union here to make my life easier. So if I place a barrel union in that location there, then I can easily disconnect this barrel when I need to. As you can see, it's a bit close to the roof. It needs to be higher, higher because I pump to the highest point and gravity overflows from there. So it's good at the time, but yeah, it is a hassle when I have to bend and stretch and get myself in between the roof and, and this. So you want to make your life a bit easier. So for years I've been saying I'm going to do this. Well, I happened to buy one yesterday. Now's the time, blackout. So let's connect it. All right, first job off the rink is to uh, get this shade cloth out of here. And I'll just give it a rinse since there's, there's no water flow anyway. Look, I did clean it out a little bit uh, a few weeks ago. In one of the other videos you would have seen, I have to jam my head in here. <laughs> Not the best look. But uh, it is a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity now there's no power on. I'll just pull all this out. It's a messy job. It was worse before. All right, so I'll just show you inside there. So you can see I've I've taken all the taken all the shake cloth out of there, and now what's left is just a bit of a, a mat, which I'll have to cut off. I'll cut that mat off, pull that out, and then what I'm going to do is add that laundry basket and I'm going to fill it up with sponges and put the shade cloth all around it. That'll just get a, it a lot finer. I'll get rid of a lot of the junk. Um, it'll be captured at the bottom. There'll be much finer particles caught and less in the pond. So try and do the smallest things first and then I'll put the uh, one-way valve on. So you can see me, I'm all jammed up in here. <laughs> but to make my life easier, I'm going to install this um, barrel union, 25mm barrel union. I haven't got much room to play with here. I've got the uh, camera hanging off the greenhouse roof as well. But look, if I just cut it, cut that pipe here somewhere, now it's pretty obvious, I should have done this years ago, um, then I'll just be able to undo this and I won't have to jam up and I can pull the whole barrel out of this location. <laughs> so I'll get cracking. <laughs> Okay, so done. So now the fun begins. Now I've got to join that on. Um, but I will now be able to remove the barrel and I'll show you the inner side of it, inner workings. All right, so about 20 minutes just passed, I suppose. Okay, I finally got the, the blue barrel out behind me. I'm sweating like anything. It's only 6.30 in the morning here. It's probably 35 degrees already. Christmas Eve, tomorrow's Christmas. Now I've got the barrel out. I had a few dramas. I forgot I had two pipes at the back, not the one. So what I've had to do is just cut off the second one as well. I'm gonna put another barrel union there to make my life easier as well. So you can see, once you uh, take the shade cloth out of here, you can see what I've got here. I've got an outlet, an inlet, inlet coming in at the back here. That's coming from, from that smaller line there at the back. And then, that higher, higher pipe there goes straight down through the middle in this design. And uh, the other two outlets on the side, well that just, that overflows into the, um, the two tanks beside me. And normally I've got aquarium fish in there. And that little tap at the bottom. And that just makes sure I can, can get rid of the junk uh, when I need to. And it's quite good because it does suck, suck right at the bottom 
and I can turn the tap at any time. If I didn't have that little uh, angle on it, it'd be so much harder. And in fact, I only, only just installed that recently um, to make my life a bit easier. That's what it's all about. So aquaponics should be easy, and it is. But uh, after about five years, this system's five years old, so after, say, five years, you really need to do a bit of maintenance if you haven't thought of everything at the start. Now, this is the, the piece that I just chopped out. As you can see, it's a swell filter. It's got angles at either end, and the water then goes in a circular motion uh, around the bottom, and that's actually a doormat. Now, it's perfect. That just keeps all the heavy particles. It's a rubberized doormat. Perfect, I, I keep that at the bottom. Very simple, it cost me about five bucks five years ago, and um, yeah, it's done the job perfectly. All right, so I've just done it now. I've completed the extension, a little bit long, but um, essentially I've got the one-way valve in there now, and I've just joined it onto the joined it onto the rest of the system. Now, I know it will take a bit more pump pressure to push through that valve, so we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work well, I can always turn it off, take it off again. And we'll just have a look inside of here now too. I've put a barrel union, <laughs> as I said I would, and I filled it up with sponges. And I happened to find that polishing pad. It's for a um, some sort of concrete polishing. It's absolutely fantastic. It's nylon, and um, I put that, put the shade cloth on, heap of sponges. And then that polishing pad, well, it's already had the hole cut into it. And, um, and also put the other, other gadget at the back. So that barrel union's there as well. So I've just done a fair bit of work. It's about nine o'clock now. Started at five o'clock. I'm dripping wet. It's so humid up here in Cairns, but um, well worth it.